In light of the new dev thoughts, I wanted to make a video going over everything we know about the DLC. A lot of the information in this video is being pulled from the last five dev thoughts, but a ton has been revealed outside the dev thoughts in various places like Discord and Twitter. So if you've only watched the dev thoughts, you only know like 60% of what we're going to cover. Remember when uh, Jimmy Neutron had the brain blast? Yeah, that'll be you. Also spoilers. This expansion is huge. It almost feels like they're doubling the size of the game, so there's a lot to cover. Check the description for timestamps if you want something specific, but first we'll just go over some very general information. We know the name of the DLC is Survivors of the Void, and it's releasing March 1st, 2022 on PC, and then a few months later on console. It will cost $15, and as far as we know, they're adding 8 new music tracks, 2 new survivors, 40 new items, a new item rarity, a new game mode, 4 new stages, 9 new monsters, 2 new elite types, 3 new interactables, 2 new bosses, and a new final boss. Music. The music in the background of this video are the new tracks from the DLC. Five of eight tracks have been revealed in the last Dev Thoughts. Apparently, they're making another vinyl, which is cool. The composer did a q and I'll link that in the description if you want to check it out. So, 40 items are being added, and we actually know quite a few. I'm going to give my first impression of all of these, but obviously I haven't played with any of them, so take what I say with a grain of salt. There are five white items planned, and we actually know a little bit about all five. Elixir. This is a white item that heals you if you dip below 25% health, and once used, it's consumed and sits as an empty bottle in your inventory. This item honestly seems pretty bad to me. I'm not really a huge fan of consumable items. Knowing what I do, I would go as far as to call this the worst item in the game. Something that redeems bad items is the fact that you can scrap them and trade them in for something better later on. But with this item, once you use it, you're done. And that scrap you're losing out on. Oddly shaped opal. Reduce incoming damage while out of danger, which sounds super redundant, right? Like, why would I need to take less damage after I've already stopped taking damage? But it actually doesn't seem too bad. This item is similar to the Cautious Slug, but instead of healing you, it creates a bubble shield that reduces the amount of damage you take on your next hit. This item seems great for Eclipse 8, but depending on your playstyle, this item might not be right for you since it requires you to stop taking hits for a while. Uh, and to clarify, out of danger doesn't mean out of combat, it just means not taking damage for a few seconds. Next is Coffee, which has actually been renamed to Mocha. We don't really know anything about this item, or at least we're not supposed to. In the last Dev Thoughts, it was shown on Railgunner, and it increased the size of the Perfect Reload sweet spot, meaning it gives us attack speed in some way. We don't know if this is the only effect this item has, nor do we know the way it's activated. A fourth white item is called Delicate Watch. We don't know exactly what it does, but we know this item is also a consumable, so my opinion on it will probably be very similar to my view on Elixir, but we'll see, I guess. This just came out right as this video is being uploaded. So, uh, Delicate Watch increases damage, and the way it works is if you lose one, you lose all of them. Going below 25% health breaks it. The last item we know next to nothing about other than this 25 pixel item.jpg. Moving on to green items, four have been shown to us, although there are likely more. We only really know two, and the other two are still pretty unknown. Shuriken. Activating your primary skill also throws out shurikens that deal 400% damage. You can hold up to three, which all reload every 10 seconds. This item seems really powerful. We don't know how these shurikens work completely, but at least from the description they seem insane. First of all, 400% damage is crazy, that's enough to proc elemental bands. From the description they seem like less accurate ATGs with a different activation mechanic, they seem like a solid item to me. We don't know the name of this item, but we pretty much know what it does. The hook grants a buff that temporarily increases your movement speed after killing an enemy or taking damage, so basically the opposite of a red whip. Movement speed is really important in this game, but the effect decays so quickly I don't know how useful this will be, but again, I've never played with this item, so I don't have a strong opinion. I'm kind of just talking out of my ass. We don't know what either of these green items do, but I do like mac and cheese, so I'm very excited to see what it brings to the table. Moving on to reds, we know two of them pretty well. Pocket ICBM. All missile items and equipment fire an additional two missiles, and stacking them adds additional damage. I think this is a really cool idea for an item, and will definitely be very powerful. Of the items we have now, I'm assuming this affects ATGs, disposable missile launchers, and fireworks. This item seems very situational. ATGs are already some of the most powerful items in the game though, and this item will make them three times better. But it also requires you to have ATGs to begin with, which isn't always the case. But I think more often than not, this will be an excellent item. The other red item that's been revealed is Ben's raincoat. Yeah, great job Ben, you dingus. Now what are we supposed to do with all these coats? This item makes you immune to all debuffs and increases your health by 100. I feel like this item is a little bit too good to be true. If what it says is true, and it prevents all debuffs, including elemental band cooldowns, this will easily be the best item in the game. Obviously, unless there's something we don't know, or bands are nerfed or something. I'm assuming it won't work this way and will leave the band cooldown alone, but even if that's the case, this item is still pretty strong regardless. 
especially late game. Imagine never having to worry about Malachites again. I feel like there has to be a catch, like a cooldown or something, but nothing is mentioned. Uh, we don't know anything about this last one. We don't even have a name for it. Moving on to Lunars, we know there will be four total, and we've caught glimpses of three of them, but Hopu's been pretty mysterious with these guys. What you're looking at now is an actual item. Friend of the channel and developer for the game, Bizazeron, actually did a small ARG in the Risk of Rain 2 Discord about two months ago. We got this poem and this image. It seems like the name for this item is Uology Zero. We know it's probably a lunar item, which is backed up by the references to Moonlight in the poem. This also hinted at it being a blue item last July during my charity stream. All we have is this grainy image, which I've been told is meant to be a domino. I think Biz has also hinted that it affects speed in some way, which makes sense to me. I've spoken to Biz a few times, very cool dude, and he's definitely a bit of a troll, so I'm very excited to see what this item does. Both items on Commando's shoulders have been implied to be lunar items, although we're not 100% sure. At the very least, the item on Commando's left shoulder is a lunar, as seen in this lunar 3D printer, which I'm very curious about and need to know more. Something interesting about these lunar printers is they have white text on them, and it's been confirmed that this is not just placeholder text, so presumably this trades one white item for one lunar item. I will reserve judgment until I know more, because I have a feeling there's a lot more to this, but if this is just in the base game, lunar printers will be very, very powerful. There are four equipment that have been confirmed. Gubo Jr. It's on a gummy clone that has 700% damage and 700% health. Expires in 30 seconds. You can have up to three at once and it has a 100 second cooldown. And from what we've seen, Gubo Jr. also seems to have the cocaine buff. It looks like Gubo was nerfed a bit since his reveal last September. Scavengers can also spawn Gubos called Scubos, and Scubos can spawn even more Scubos, which is terrifying. Scubos have different items from their base scabs though, so they shouldn't happen very often but the fact that they have the potential to chain at all is something to look out for. The next one we don't have a name or description for, it's a credit card, and we have no clue what it does. If I had to speculate though, I would think this would have something to do with money, so maybe it lets you open chests for free or something like that. There's this ghost revolver thing, we don't really know anything about it, but there you go. Apparently it's supposed to be good. I'm not entirely sure what this last one is, it kind of looks like a body bag to me, but I honestly have no clue. To finish off items, let's talk about the new item tier. To quote Jonathan, the community manager, Void items. These are sneaky doppelgangers of existing items. Once collected, they absorb all current and future copies of the original item. It corrupts them to increase their own power for the rest of the run. It's been confirmed they're adding 13 void items and are obtained through a new interactable called a Void Cradle. These spawn randomly on all maps and cost 50% of your health for a random void item. Jonathan has implied this might not actually be the case on launch. There's also been a new currency that's been hinted, so uh, who knows? We've caught glimpses at quite a few, but we still only know three of them. The first one is Lost Seer's Lenses, and this is the corrupted version of Lensmaker Glasses. Instead of increasing crit by 10%, each pair of glasses now gives you a 0.5% chance to insta-kill non-boss enemies. I think this item is really, really interesting. Assuming this also kills elites, I think this item can really benefit survivors with high attack speed. Commando and Nailgun Multi immediately come to mind here. However, crit is a very important mechanic in the game, and a lot of items synergize really well with crit, so losing that is a pretty big deal. This is going to open the door for all kinds of new builds, and I'm really excited. It seems like this item will be horrendous on survivors with low attack speed though. Loader and Artificer will really struggle with this. Also, if you still think Crowdfunder is bad, try it with this item. The next one is Weeping Fungus, and it's the Corrupted Bungling Fungus. Bustling? Whatever, fuck you. This heals you for 2% of your health every second while sprinting. In my mind, this is just a straight up upgrade. Fungus was one of the weakest healing items in the game, and Weeping Fungus seems like it'll be one of the strongest healing items in the game. On stationary NG, it'll suck to lose Bungus, but that's honestly the only situation I'd consider not taking it. You're always sprinting in Risk of Rain 2, and Wungus scales with your health. But also, this is not okay, Hopu Games. I'm calling you out. This game has been out for three years, and for some reason, everybody thinks Bungus is just the most lamowable thing. I told my grandma about Bungus, she raffled out of her chair, and she had to be put on life support. Oh my god. Maybe I'm just old. I genuinely don't understand the joke here, though. As far as I can tell, the joke is it's a mushroom, which I feel is like the most cliche video game joke to ever exist. If I went up to you and said, Hey, you know how uh, Mario eat up the mushroom? <laughs> well, what if Mario was just high throughout the entire game. <laughs> now, which outcome is more likely? You XDing so hard that your head explodes. Are you telling me to get the fuck off your property? Anyway, Bungus Mania is a sickness, and Hopu Games, yes, that Hopu Games, wants to add more mushrooms to their game. Unacceptable.
Hashtag Wongusgate. Let's get it trending. The last one is Polyu, which is the corrupted ukulele. 25% chance to fire lightning for 50% total damage up to three times. This is another very interesting one. You're essentially trading area of effect and potentially proc chains for more single target damage. Now, I'm assuming this has a proc coefficient, so I don't think this will kill proc chains as much as you might think, but it will definitely nerf them greatly. Ukulele is such a staple item at this point, it will be interesting to see how this affects builds. Proc chains aren't everything in this game, a great example being Mythrix, where ukes are about as effective as me yelling at my son to do the dishes, not very. I don't want to say too much, because I want to see how this works first, but Hopu definitely did a great job with this item, because I'm split 50-50 on it. John Hopu has confirmed there will be two new survivors added in the DLC, and we know one of them. Railgunner is the spiritual successor to Sniper from the first game, and she's the first long-range survivor in the game. Her primary is the XQR Smart Round System. This ability shoots out rapid-fire smart rounds that home onto targets and do 100% damage. Her secondary puts the railgun in sniper mode. It zooms in and highlights weak points on targets, transforming her primary into a piercing 1000% damage railgun. Crit works a little differently on railgunner than it does on other survivors. Instead of having a chance to crit any given attack, railgunner can only crit by hitting targets in their weak spots. Items that increase crit chance now increase crit damage. So for example, Lensmaker Glass is normally given an additional 10% crit chance, but on railgunner this would instead make crits do an additional 10% damage. You can also a perfect reload by reloading in the highlighted sweet spot. This deals an additional 500% damage and lets you fire sooner, which is insane. If I'm understanding this correctly, performing a perfect reload and hitting an enemy in their sweet spot will deal over 3000 damage, assuming you have no crit, in which case it's more. To put that in perspective, that's the equivalent of a royal capacitor shot, except it's her main ability. Just wow. Railgunner's utility is a concussion device that launches everything around it. It has two charges and two functions, the first being a movement ability. By jumping at the right time, the concussion device can catapult you away from danger or be used to gain massive height. It can also break apart groups of enemies, or ideally push them off the map for an easy kill. I can't wait to see the insane movement strats we will come up with. Railgunner special manages to deal even more damage than her primary, using this ability overloads her railgun and deals 4000% damage with a 150% multiplier for hitting in the sweet spot. The overloaded shot is also a lot wider, meaning it hits a lot more enemies. It has a 15 second cooldown, and the only downside to this ability is it disables your railgun for 5 seconds after firing. To be perfectly honest, that doesn't really seem like big of a deal, just use those 5 seconds to line up enemies for another shot pretty easy, but we'll see I guess. People have also figured out that attack speed also functions a little bit differently. I'm not sure if it actually increases your fire rate, but apparently it does make the perfect reload zone bigger when reloading. Railgunner has alternates for her secondary, utility, and special, but we have no information about them. My first impression of Sniper, I mean Railgunner, Railgunner, not Sniper, uh, she seems pretty well suited to my playstyle. Obviously I haven't played her yet, so I can't make any huge judgments, but she seems very skill based, which I love. I'm also very curious to see how this survivor plays on controller. I'm pretty sure PC doesn't have controller aim assist right now. I'm sure it'll be fine. And as far as the other survivor goes, we got this teaser of a gusher looking thing landing on the planet. This seems like it's the spawn in animation for the new survivor. So presumably the survivor is void themed, but that's about it. Moving on to the new game mode, we know quite a bit here. It seems like it's a much more fleshed out version of void fields called Simulacrum. It can be played with one to four players and it's a wave based game mode that only ends when you die. It really reminds me a little bit of uh, Call of Duty Zombies, if you've ever played that. Simulacrum takes environments from other parts of the game and twists them into these new void variants. Much like Void Fields, it's wave based, each wave increasing in difficulty. Every 10 stages, the environment shifts to a new stage. It's also been confirmed that the legendary chests will still spawn in their designated locations on Abyssal and Grove. Every 10 stages, monsters will also gain items. Every 5 stages, there will be a boss event. Some waves will have random mutations, we know this includes artifacts and these can be both positive and negative. After each wave, a void potential spawns as a reward and it gives you the option between three items similar to a multi-shop. Chests also spawn in this game mode, however leaving the safe zone is dangerous because it triggers health drain. The safe zone moves around after every wave, allowing you to more easily obtain items from chests. That's about all we know. Definitely very excited to neglect my 7.5 sons to play this. Next let's talk stages. We know they're adding 4 stages and these are variants for stages 1, 2, 3, and 5. This means every stage will now have three maps. Of the four being added, two have been revealed. Siphoned Forest, formerly known as Snowy Forest, is the alternate map for stage one. 
It's another snow map, but it has these big trees in the middle with paths connecting them. It also has underground tunnels on the outskirts. I was surprised how big this stage actually was for a stage one variant. It looked to me like it was a little bit bigger than planes. This is the only stage we have a considerable amount of gameplay for. Check the dev thoughts if you want to see a playthrough of this stage. Something cool I noticed about this stage is the shrines have snow on them. It's not huge, but it's a nice touch and definitely something they didn't have to add. Athelian Sanctuary is the new stage two alternate. Again, we don't know a ton, but I really love the aesthetic of this stage. This stage just gives me Zelda vibes. Like that whole like runic technology look is one of my favorite video game aesthetics. Really cool, and I'm definitely looking forward to playing on this stage. We know they're adding two more stages, a stage three alternate and a stage five alternate. The stage three alternate is called Sulfur Pools and presumably has pools of sulfur. Pretty insightful commentary, I know. Uh, moving on to enemies, the DLC will have nine new enemies, and we know five of them. First, there's Blind Pests, to quote community manager Jonathan again. If Wisps were the flying shotguns of Risk of Rain 2, the Blind Pest is the flying rifle. Yeah, I can tell these will end a lot of my runs. I feel like the gameplay kind of speaks for itself, but I love the design of these guys. Again, they really remind me of something you'd see in a Zelda game. They have snowy variants on uh, Siphon Forest, and probably Rally Point. I think it's just a skin change, but again, it's a nice touch. Gup, Geep, and Gip are returning enemies from the first Risk of Rain, and these are basically just Minecraft slimes. The biggest slime is Gup. Once you kill Gup, it'll split into two smaller Geeps, and Geeps split into two even smaller Gips. Void Jailers are a new Void Monster. They're from the same faction as Void Reavers. They have two attacks, a Void Blast that does massive damage and a Snare that stuns you in place. I would assume these guys are late game enemies like Void Reavers. This is pretty speculative, but it's likely they'll add another Void Monster. We got this teaser a while back after Jailer was revealed of a death screen where the cause of death was a Void something. This could be a new enemy type. It could also be a new elite type or even possibly the new survivor. Anyone's guess. We have these poison bug things, name yet to be revealed, but they look like they spawn in groups. They roll around and jump at you, and they seem like they have a pretty large area of effect. Additionally, we got these Mexican jumping bean rat creatures, probably not the official name. They lunge at the player and also have different color variants. Finally, we got a glimpse at this vulture thing. I don't think we're supposed to know anything about it. It looks heckin' pissed off though. The DLC will add two elite types to the game. The first one is Mending. This elite type was from the first game, and enemies with this affix heal nearby enemies. This is what the aspect looks like. We don't know much about the other elite type other than it's completely new and will not be something adapted from the first game. If I had to put my money on it though, I'd say it's a Void Elite to go with the theme of the expansion. There's three new interactables. We've already gone over the Void Cradle. Lunar 3D printers may be one of them, still unclear, but we know for sure this dropship is one of them. This interactable, you have the option between two items. One item is always shown, the other is always random, and it's of equal or higher rarity. From the teasers, it looks like reds will show up here somewhat frequently. That's all we know about this. I hope it's something that like drops in mid-stage, that'd be pretty cool and guaranteed to make my dad smile. We haven't seen anything about the new bosses or the new final boss, and I have a feeling hope who will leave the final boss a surprise. I very quickly want to go over the ARG, so if you're wondering what the deal with that QR code was in the stream right before the dev thoughts, scanning it takes you to this website. Going to this website gives you a code and asks you for a password. Putting the code through an ASCII translator results in the word shake. By noting down the times the screen shakes during the stream, you get this set of numbers. I'll put it in the description. Entering that number to password will show you this 10 second video. Nobody really knows what this is. My best guess is Planet Sheen. I'm not the person to ask. That's everything we know right now. However, there's new teasers almost every day. So in the description, I will link a Google Doc which compiles everything revealed about the DLC. It's where I got the majority of my information for this video. So huge shout out to The Grove Tender, Ratbag, Creeps, Mr. Man, Ya Boy Fat, and Wafer Kaken in the official Risk of Rain 2 Discord. They're doing great work and very graciously allowed me to leech off them a little bit. This video has been such a pain to make. Obviously, I wanted to get it out as soon as possible, but new info kept coming out and I had to keep re-recording lines and uh, this video is gonna age like milk. But I hope you enjoyed it regardless. We're getting one more dev thoughts this month. I may or may not make a video on it. I'll definitely have tons of content to make once the DLC drops, so subscribe to be notified. Man, I hate telling people to subscribe. It feels really shitty. The meta though, so it is what it is. Anyway, have a great day, everybody.